What's going on traders? Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. All I can say about today's trading session is, wow, that was pretty insane, not gonna lie. Let's dive into today's analysis. We'll talk through the price action. We'll go through my trades today and how I'm handling this crazy market action. Oh my gosh, look at these box scores. S&P 500 down 2.9% for today's session. NASDAQ QQQ down 3.77%. IWM small caps were down 3.15%. The dogs of the Dow were down 2.38%. And we had a complete and utter capitulation in this ARK Innovation ETF. It was down 6.75%. Now here is where we can see the real panic emerging in the market. Pretty much everything closed at the low end of the range and the volatility literally exploded. We'll have to take a look at some of these volatility indices in just a moment. We had washout breath. We had 0% advancers in the Dow, zero in ARC. We only had 6% advancers in SPY. This is a complete capitulation event. Right now, my trend model, it is still at a negative three. This is why using the trend model is so important because if you're following it and you're reducing your risk when it is red, and when it's at a negative three especially, you're not going to get eviscerated in these down sequences in the market. All right, let's take a look. Finvis heat map, this thing was just an absolute bloody mess. No real description needed here. The mega cap tech stocks just got obliterated. And look at Tesla. Tesla was down 12.18%. So there was a lot of rumors flying around. Like this morning, I saw a headline and it was basically saying like, hey, things with Russia could be escalating, talks of a nuclear war, things of that nature. Maybe that is partly what spooked the market. And then with Tesla specifically, I know people are saying, oh, it's because Elon Musk is acquiring Twitter. That could be part of it. I think that's likely part of it. Another part of it is likely just the NASDAQ is in a downtrend and that's one of the last names to really go. And this is just a complete capitulation event. So like Tesla really just got absolutely rocked by a confluence of factors today. Our sectors, you can see they're all pretty much blood red and pretty much the more risk on the sector was the harder it got hit we had cryptocurrencies also down pretty big so overall just a bloodbath energy was the only group that was positive a 0.14 percent i think it was likely off of some of those rumblings about this uh russia and ukraine situation and their style factor same exact thing let's dive into our indices we'll take a look at the action then we'll look at some of my trades for today so the s p 500 you know, my trend model is at a negative three. We had a negative trend the whole day. Trend was flagging red. And then the tick index is pretty much negative the entire day as well. We've been talking about this the past, you know, couple of weeks. This teal trend line, we're below the trend line. So yeah, if you're below the trend line, that's not a good thing. If the market has a spill and the trend model's negative, if you get obliterated, you know, at least in my process, that's my fault, that's my bad. So S&P 500, we're now trading below this monthly value area low. And now look at this. The next two levels that we have to contend with on the downside are the low that we made or the lows, excuse me, that we made in mid-March. So we're pretty much retesting those levels. And then also the low that we made in January. Now, keep in mind, the volatility is completely blowing out. Let's look at the VIX. The VIX is up at a 33 and it pretty much closed out on the highs. So we are in the midst of this volatility event. The VIX futures curve, it is also inverted. So that definitely means we are having a panic in the market. Now, if you're looking for capitulation, that inversion of the VIX futures curve, that's usually a great place to look. The only problem is when that VIX futures curve inverts, maybe start dipping your toes in the water, maybe add a little bit of exposure, whatever. But the biggest market crashes, panics, etc., they've occurred when that VIX futures curve inverts so basically you have a high win rate when it inverts but if you get caught with too much risk or making an all-in bet that's where you could really get messed up if say it was like the coronavirus crash or something like that my baseline assumption is this is not the coronavirus crash but we'll have to see our nasdaq volatility this one really exploded and i actually traded the nasdaq actively today the vxn it's pushing a 40 now, remember, we also had FANG earnings that came out today. Let's go into those real quick. Take a look at the companies that reported. We had today Microsoft, Alphabet, Visa, Enphase, a lot of these big names. Let's take a look at some of them. 
and how they're doing after hours. So let's start with Microsoft. Microsoft, nice. This one is basically flat. It spilled over right when they reported. And you can see we went all the way down to 259. Some dip buyers came in. So we're pretty much flat. Google, this one actually got hit a little bit harder, but overall still not too bad. Google's at about 2265. So it's off by a couple percent. Nothing really too crazy. So I posed this question to Twitter earlier. Of course, everyone's very concerned about these FANG earnings. That's like the huge canary in the coal mine. But with the VIX or the VXN, excuse me, if it's at pushing a 40, we basically got Microsoft unchanged, Google a few percent off. Is that enough to really sustain the VIX or the VXN at a 40? I really don't think it is. So I honestly think this earnings catalyst went a lot better than expected because what we could have had is like, a Netflix like event where the stocks down like 20% is just a waterfall out of the two stocks Google's definitely more suspect so we're gonna have to see how that one trades tomorrow we don't have all of our answers for today's session all right let's take a look at Visa that one reported as well a little bit less important but let's look at Visa Visa is actually up a few percent which is good and we have Enphase which is also up a few percent so not bad honestly so yeah tomorrow i think we might end up getting a bounce we'll have to see another positive factor we have our dark index this is something we track very closely this registered at a 45.2 percent reading and that shows that these dark pool buyers began to accumulate some equities from weak hands today so speaking of accumulating from weak hands let's dive into some of my trading and take a look here so this one, I got to say, I'm very happy with how I traded my common stock today. This morning, I took stops on pretty much all of my stock exposure. So I went basically all in cash. And that happened just because I moved my stops up to break even. So like upstart got stopped at break even. Uh, TQQQ, I was long the common shares here. I was able to take a 25% target on this one. And then I moved the stop to break even on the rest of my position. Same thing, I got stopped out at break even at 944. So I was able to evade pretty much all that downside in TQQQ since then. SLVM, I noticed I got stopped out of these two positions up here. I still had a small gain in SLVM. So I just said, you know what, I'm gonna book this thing because you know the market's not giving me the best feedback. That ended up being a great decision because SLVM went lower throughout the day. So yeah, the best thing is when you're managing your risk, and you are using your stops and you're defining your risk ahead of the trade and then when the trade moves in your favor you're moving your stop up it's very tough to get eviscerated the market's basically going to take you out of your positions when it gets very weak so i was pretty pumped about that overall basically weathered the storm and just followed my rules there and then i did do some options trading so i actually sold the seven and a half strike puts on pct this is another thing we are talking about in the pristine capital trading community the implied volatility is really getting bloated in a lot of these indices because we are having this panic. Investors are flocking towards put options. So PCT, this is a name I've been doing some preliminary research on. Really, to be honest, for like a long-term investment, really not even for a trade. But take a look at this one. This one raised equity at a share price of seven bucks per share by selling the 750 puts and collecting a premium of 55 cents for doing that, if this stock continues to fall, I'm gonna be able to acquire it for a cost basis of 695. So yeah, that one, I take in some premium and it allows me to accumulate this stock if it moves lower. I ended up doing the same thing for TQQQ. So check this trade out. This is really just trying to get crafty with options. I sold the May 20th 36 strike puts for 256. So remember, by selling those puts, I collect the 256. That money comes to me in my account. And then if TQQQ goes down to 36, whoever owns those puts has the right to exercise on me. And I'm forced to buy TQQQ at the 36 strike. Now the break even price for this is 36 bucks minus the premium I collected. That's $33.44. At the time, that was about 16.6% .6 lower for TQQQ and 5.5% lower for the NASDAQ. 
and TQQQ, this thing definitely closed to the weak side. But if I take delivery on this thing, that will mean the, the NASDAQ is just incredibly oversold. Oh yeah, I also noticed there was this virgin point of control down here, and that's actually what led me to select that 36 strike. So yeah, May 20th, it's in a few weeks. Right now it feels like, oh my gosh, why would you sell a put option there? Like, it's gonna go to nothing. But yeah, I can really sense there's a lot of fear in the market. And then I ended up taking small position, just a one star trade. I got long some May 20th QQQ calls. And I put here, this is a day to short term swing trade. The weaker the market is into Microsoft and Google earnings, the better the risk reward is. So yeah, this is just in case we get our balance like I've been talking about. But overall, for me, I stopped out of all my common stock. I sold some put options, which is basically like a more defensive maneuver. And then I basically put on like a bounce trade in case the QQQ moves off this very oversold level. So overall, pretty comfortable with how I'm positioned at the moment. Although this market is definitely crazy. My trend model is still at a negative three. And I must say like the crash window, it's definitely wide open. We can't rule out that this is not a market crash just yet. So yeah, it's gonna be an exciting week. And I think we're just gonna have to take it day by day. We certainly don't have all of our answers yet, but it's all about staying composed and really just following your process. Even if you're taking a couple test trades or whatever, as long as you define your risk on the downside and you follow that stop, if it hits, you're gonna be a-okay. With that being said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you all tomorrow.